Number one today is Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. And this is the week in charts. I'm just gonna thank all you guys and girls for attending live. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'd like to personally thank you. Feel free to like the video if you like it. And if you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. I'm half kidding. <laughs> Seriously, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to leave a comment below, feel free to do so. I read and answer all comments. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have plenty to say on that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks. Just hang on, as you, I think everybody here knows, until we get to the live charts for that. And then ask about one stock at a time. Hit return. You can ask about as many as we want. We should be able to get to all of them. So I'm getting a lot of questions on opening gap reversals or ogres, as we call them. If you go to the Q&A on my members area, you have to be a member, obviously a gold member, you'll see that we spend, I wouldn't say an inordinate amount of time, but a tremendous amount of time talking about opening gap reversals. And you would probably think that's all this guy does. And like, no, we might make wait weeks and weeks for a decent opening gap reversal. And then it's like, they all come at once. Like yesterday, it was like, it reminded me of sailing. And uh, I know we have a couple of sailors in the group. It's hours of boredom interrupted by brief moments of sheer panic. And if you've ever been sailing before, you know what that is, especially if you did a little ocean racing here and there. And that's kind of how yesterday was. We just had a plethora of opening gap reversals. We've been waiting around forever for a decent opening gap reversal. And that'll make a lot of sense once we start looking at some of these. There's a flame screen, as you know, you can lose money trading, or as I often like to sum it up, all predictions about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. That's borrowing a line from my buddy Greg Morris. Okay, so the people at StockCharts.com have been real accommodating with me, and one of the things that I haven't explored just yet is open a gap reversal. So for that, I'm still using FinViz. And if you go to my website, if you click on new to the methodology or new to me, you can scroll down. There's a link for Finviz uh, in that, uh, in the list of things. And I'm, I don't get I paid or anything, but I do get a comp on a, a subscription as people sign up. Anyway, so what I like about Finviz, and again, I'll see, I'll talk to people over at Stock Charts and see if they can do something similar, is that I can see at a glance by running a simple scan, just looking for opening gaps. Now. Yesterday, there were so many opening gaps, I had to increase my scan from like 5% to about 8%. I like to try to get them all on one page or maybe a page and a half, so I don't have to scroll back and forth too much. Now, just kind of quickly going through these, this is what popped up in that FinViz scan. So here you can see, this is kind of wide and loose and sideways and gap lower. Now remember, we're trying to capture a gap that gets filled in the direction of the trend. And an ideal way of doing it would be in a pullback like this one here. Notice the stock went straight up and then pull back. So that would definitely go on my watch list. Now, back when they used to have market makers, I guess they still have market makers, but back when you had a guy on the floor and a stock gap sharply lower, the market maker for that stock, he's got to buy that stock from you, okay? Because you want to unload it. You're like, okay, I got to get rid of this piece of crap. He's like, okay, I'll buy you crap, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lower the bid to such a level where it's gonna be ridiculously low, and buy it in from you at a bargain, and then bring the stock up during the day and, and sell it out at a higher price. Now that's not exactly how it happens nowadays, but that's sort of the gist of it when it comes to trading these opening gap reversals. So you're looking for people to get caught off guard, possibly all rush in to sell at once. And once that selling exhausts itself, if the stock is in a really good trend, especially if it's set up within a pullback, then it'll work really well. Now this one looks okay. This one here, as you can see, this one looks pretty good. So I'd put a check mark next to that one, BLNK. Now I caught this, these screen captures are after the fact, so you could see what actually happened, okay? I, I came in this morning, I woke up thinking like, dang, why not capture those screens? And then luckily, these were left over from the day before. So we now, you could have the benefit of hindsight to see what actually happened on these. But usually, obviously, you would just have a little tick mark, like right here, for instance, down around six in this AYRO. And then if you like it, then you go, you look to trade it. And I'll show you which ones I traded here in just one second. 
This one here, it's just not a fantastic looking stock. Plus, it, it gave up a lot of its gain. So I just X that one out. This one's kind of a bottle rocket. It's shot higher, but then it comes right back in. So I pass on that one. This one also is kind of a little bit on the cray cray side. It took off. It uh, went up about 400% over several days, and then it began to implode. So I decided to pass on that. Now, this one, CRSR, this is a stock that I have recently loved. And towards the end of presentation, towards the end of presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about this particular stock. But this was also an opening gap reversal. I'd got knocked out the day before, I believe, on this one. And then the day before that, the service was taken out of it. And I still like the stock, still in a nice trend, still in a pullback. And I had hoped that that gap would fill, but it didn't. And I actually did not take a trade there yesterday. Now, moving along, you can see this one just barely got past its prior highs and then gave it all up in one gap down. DMYT, this looks pretty good. Nice uptrend, kind of a knockout type of move on that opening gap. That looks pretty good. FSL looks pretty good. Nice little trend higher, nice little knockout move. And then an FSR, nice trend higher, and then a bit of a pullback. Now, in case I forget, one thing I do like to do with the ogres, not that I won't trade an opening gap reversal in a thinner stock, but ideally I want a nice thick stock. I want a tremendous amount of volume. And there's one I'm gonna show you here that I went after that had an unbelievable amount of, of volume. We were talking about it on Facebook yesterday. Somebody said, can you flesh it out a little bit while you picked it? It's like, well, tremendous amount of volume and not that I'm using volume as a predictor of price, but rather volume as a predictor of the fact that, or indicator that there's a lot of people interested in the stock. So a lot of people are caught off guard, a lot of people on the wrong side of the market. But my hope and thinking with some of these is there's also a lot of people, maybe institutions want to rush into the stock. And a while back, I guess about a year and a half ago, Cree was a, just an absolutely perfect opening gap reversal, it was a big, thick, thick, thick stock. And my thinking is what happened was that when it gapped lower, the institutions who want to buy it could go in and buy it at a bargain price and get in a stock that they want to be long. So that's another reason to trade the opening gap reversals and look for those that are that have a, a nice solid volume. So this one kind of shot higher, it's okay. It's not really jumping out at me because it did kind of move a long ways over a very, very short period of time. This one's kind of sideways, so I'd pass on that. This one looks like an electrocardiogram. Ironically, <laughs> it's IRTC. It's a company that deals with electrocardiograms or the output from electrocardiogram. Candy did about 100% retrace, so I'm gonna leave that one alone. LI was on the trading service, or at least in the lander list, for quite a while so that one's looking pretty good so that one's okay i don't like the way this one was kind of already coming out of its pullback so i'm going to pass on that one because it wasn't set up this was another one of those situations where it just went straight up and came right back in so i'm going to pass on that one and then all of this is done by the way at a quick glance now yesterday we had so damn many of them it wasn't easy now, this one looks pretty good. NIO, it's another one of those car companies. All these car companies got whack yesterday, but then a lot of people decided, well, maybe we do want to still buy electric cars. Maybe that's still the hottest thing in hot town. And notice that this one did make a nice, nice, nice reversal from the lows. I did not play this one. I, I reached a point where, and this is something I wanted to flesh out later, but I'll go ahead and mention it now, was I, I can't kiss all the women. I had so many damn setups. And as I said in the Facebook group, and to uh, one of my clients directly, had all these setups, 12, let's say 10 or 12 of them, set up over the next couple of weeks, one day at a time, like one I'll show you in just one minute, which was a money line in the corner trade, I think, or at least it turned, seems that way. But if they would set up one, one day at a time, it would have been much, much easier to take each and every one that I really liked. And it's, it's probably about a dozen or so. We'll count them up in the end. So that looks pretty good. Now, PLTR, as I said in the Facebook group, I'm long this particular stock. And then that gap 
down yesterday. I had a plethora of F bombs, but my thinking and hopes, and this is where you got to be careful when you use that word hope, okay, in trading. But my hope was that it would close that gap and continue higher. And by adding on a few shares for a day trade, I would mitigate some of the overnight losses, kind of trade on the same side as the market maker, so to speak. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're, you're doing with these opening app reversals. It's easy for me to say. And like I said, I was kind of sad because I had a big ass loss coming in overnight. Oh, there's the uh, Facebook comment. There you go. P L T R F bomb for me, ogre for you. <laughs> and I went ahead and traded it as an ogre. I'm not going to show this one. Uh, this one did not work out, but it was just a small loss. I think it lost a half a point on the day. So, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. Now, this QS. I don't remember this particular stock yesterday. So, I don't know whether or not I would have gone after it. In hindsight, it looks like it's okay, but that retrace was pretty serious there. This RETA, you can see, it shot up. It's come all the way back in, so forget about that. And this ride is a bumpy ride. It's just kind of all over the place, so forget about that one. RMG is aggressive, but okay. It did uh, run up about 100% over a short period of time. But it does have a gap down and a pullback. And as you can see, by the end of the day, it actually looked like it did work out. Root, obviously, going straight down. There's a, a testament for why we don't buy IPOs coming right out the gate. This one's already lost half of its value. Now, SBC, SBE, I should say, it looks pretty darn good. Again, I just had so much going on yesterday, and I ended up trading four of these, I think. And it just was. I was just spread a little thin and and I did like SPE is one of my favorites. This SOL is okay. It's gapping from all time highs. I sort of prefer the reversion to the mean pullback type of play. Kind of like the solo, you can see nice little pullback and I did actually play that one. We'll get to these in just one second. This one's kind of all over the place and then it gaps down, giving up most of that uptrend that it just had. So I passed on that one. And then this one looks pretty good. I actually did take this trade, and that was my favorite one of the day yesterday. So this is what this is my short list from all those. So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I thought I was about eleven or twelve. So if these would have spread out over two weeks, this could have been an unbelievable opportunity. But unfortunately, it just all comes at you at once. And that's the frustrating thing sometimes with trading. It can be kind of streaky in your setups. It can be streaky in you printing of the money, okay? And then a lot of times you just go back to sitting around doing nothing, right? And that's the hard part too, doing nothing. But that's another conversation. Now, what's interesting is if you take a look at my Landry list, and one of you guys pointed out in the, in the group this morning that I did point out that these electric car companies were getting hit hard. And we could see an opening gap reversal. So pay attention to those. So the ones I ended up taking also were also happened to be the ones in the Landry list coming into today or yesterday, I should say. So they were sort of pre-qualified. I really liked the stocks to begin with and then to make that opening gap. And that's one reason why I went after those. Now, this particular case, you can see this stock has accelerated higher. It's pulled back, and then we have the gap lower. So, again, we're looking to get that reversion to the mean move back in the direction of trend, at least at least for one day. Now, when we're trading pullbacks, we're looking for a reversion to the mean back in the direction of the trend. When we're trading an opening gap reversal in a setup like this, we're hoping in that, that trend gets started really fast intraday. It's still a day trade, but we're going to try to hold on for the entire day. So this is what it looked like intraday. You can see it's gapped higher and it did kind of rally up a little bit, which for a second there, I was making that go or no go decision. But when I looked at the daily chart, something I'd recommend you do is make sure your entry is high enough to avoid getting stopped out on noise alone. And I decided that the entry there stopped there and I forget what I was looking for. I will see it in one second. I think it was 40 cents on this particular one. 
Now, for some reason, I ended up exiting a little bit early on this one, but it did go up to hit that initial profit target. So let me just give you a, a brief thumbnail. If I'm entering here and let's say, let's just do round numbers for one second. If I'm doing 50 cents, okay, then my stop's going to be down here at 50 cents below the entry. My initial profit target is going to be 50 cents above the entry, okay? And my trailing stop is going to be at 50 cents. And as I walk you through these, that'll make more and more sense. So I did rally up to hit the initial profit target. For some reason, I answered a little bit early. I just had a lot going on and I felt like I didn't want to lose the trade. And the trailing stop was almost a break even at that point. So I figured it would keep me in the stock. It ended up exiting the rest of the shares by the end of the day. Now, I did take this across multiple accounts, but just a snapshot to show you a reasonable share size of about a thousand shares or exactly a thousand shares. So looks like I ended up with, let's see, 620 to 651. So it was only 30 cents. And I think I was looking for a little bit more on that, but I figured it was better than the poke in the eye. So that's $155. And then on the remainder, which I wrote to the close was an 80 cent gain or 81 cent gain. And that was another 400 bucks. So 155 and 400 comes to 560 bucks on this particular trade. And by the way, I do, people's like, why do you have more than one account? Well, it's because the way things kind of ended up over history, it ended up in a certain way. And, but the other thing I find is it's really easy for me to go in and, and, and do a, a little trade like that. In this case, made $500, but if I lose $500, you know, who cares, right? And I could do that kind of over and over again in one account, and then, and then I could switch over to another account and kind of do the same thing. And it's much easier for me, at least from a psychological perspective, as opposed to going in and making one big trade. So here's another one, solar that I picked. And then, again, gap down. And my thinking was, okay, let's see if we can catch this little flip back to the upside. This is what it looked like intraday. You could see that it began to rally. And here's where I was thinking about just jumping in. And this is where it takes a lot, a lot of discipline, especially when you've got a half a dozen of these triggering all over the place. In a case like this, again, back out to that daily chart, look at where it would certainly be beginning to reverse, okay? And not just noise alone. And fortunately, it didn't. It, then began to sell off. So now it's kind of a no brainer. We could enter somewhere above the high with a little wiggle room and then stop down below the low. Now, keep in mind, and I'm just thinking out loud here, I may, if I just had this one stock to trade yesterday, I might have, after it sold off hard, lowered my stop, my entry of that quite a bit. But what happened was it's like, okay, I had my entry in place and then I was off to the next one, off to the next one off to the next one. Now, I will show you one here in a second. I want to make it sound like you're sitting here watching the screen all day, although if you let yourself, you can. But ideally, you want to try to make these as hands off as possible. When I show you today's, that'll make a lot of sense. And I guess it'll make sense in these too. So once you've got your order in place, once you trigger in, what I simply do is I go ahead and place a limit order, okay? In this particular case, I was looking for 70 cents, but I put, place a limit order above the market, and then I place a, a trailing stop below the market. Now, that's for half. Now, in this case, I think I did exit a little bit early. We'll take a look at the actual trades here in one second. And at that point, my stop was nearly break even. And then the automated trailing stop rallied up during the day, but then went sideways the rest of the day, and then I ended up exiting on the close. So here's the actual trade you can see 662 and then the, the difference of that was a half a point okay and then on the remainder was 36 cents and if you add those two together another better in a poke in the eye type of trades 261 dollars better in the poke in the eye again now, I like to do a little fun with math. 
So if you made $261 every day and you did it for a year, and this is on about a 100K account, okay? So that's a $65,000, 700 gain, $700 gain, which is about 65%. That's much better than poking the eye. A friend of mine, he probably messaged me on Facebook yesterday because he's learning how to trade. And he says, well, if I can just make 200, because he's fairly close to retirement. He says, I can just make $200 a day. I'll sit on a sit on the beach and smoke a fatty <laughs> all day. It's like, and another guy, I know he wouldn't actually do that, but I think that was kind of a metaphor for he wouldn't do a whole lot else. Anyway, I just thought that was funny. So XPEV, nice, nice uptrend, gaps lower, okay? And same sort of action again. My thinking is, okay, this thing is shaking out some people. Let's look for that reversion to the mean move, at least on intraday basis. And let's see what happens. So it kind of rallied a little bit, but fortunately came back in. And, and once again, I looked at the daily chart and that got me a little bit further above the market to help avoid the noise. And here's the actual trades. A couple hundred shares is plenty. I mean, that's a $10,000 investment, so to speak. And also in this particular case, I was using a two point stop. So two points times 200, it's, uh, let's see, what's that? Two of two is $400. $400 and that's about a 0.4% gain. A lot of times with these ogres, I don't wanna go more than a half a percent per trade because let's say we had five of these or six of these, we took all six at a half percent each and they all got whacked. You're out $3,000 or 3% on this account and you're gonna be a hurting pup because that money goes away. It's not like tomorrow in a lot of these position trades where yeah, they might get whacked four or five points a day, but you come back tomorrow and all of a sudden they're back four or five points or more that's a loss that you lock in. So you've got to be careful with the intraday trading. So in this particular case, based on two points, I figured that if it came all the way back into this level here, then it would have been a failed setup. And my IPT was up here. And you can see it did trigger that. It did hit the IPT. And once it hits the IPT, the stop is trailed higher. And the stop is going to be exactly, if you're trading a two, trailing a two-point stop, it's going to be exactly at the break even level and you could see it trailed higher and then it stopped out now one thing that i will occasionally do and on one of these i did do it in another account just didn't have time to track it all down to see how it works but i know i didn't do it on xpev one thing i'll do if i'm ahead by a really really nice amount okay and let's say i'm trailing on a two point stop i might open that up to three points in attempt to ride out a correction this little pullback here for instance maybe i could have ridden that out but i did get knocked out i was tempted to go back in on this intraday pullback but then i realized that i'm kind of busting the plan i'm kind of day trading just move on and be happy with what the market gave you but you could see had i given a little bit more wiggle room and again i do this on occasion i'll open it up a little bit more I may have been able to ride up this correction and then get out at 56 versus almost 54. So I could have maybe squeezed a couple of points out of it if I would have given it a little bit more room. Now, of course, the trade-off is you're going to give up those intraday profits or some of those intraday profits, but you're going to still make good money. So let's say if I'd open this stock stop up a point, okay, I still would have made at least a couple of points on the trade because we were ahead way up here at, the, let's say, 56 or so. 56, that's six points on the trade. It could have given a little bit more wiggle room. One thing I tried not to do yesterday, because it, it, it affects me, and and you, can't, you know, money affects you. It's like if I look and see, okay, I've got $600 or let's say if it's uh, how many, six. Yeah, if I looked and said six times two, that's $1,200. If I got $1,200 open profit on this, that might kind of stress me out and make me tempted to mentally monetize and go in and grab that, or maybe be a deer in the headlights and watch it evaporate and then get aggravated because I lost money, okay? But overall, made money on the day. So I find by not watching it too much and then just try to say, okay, well, this two-point trailing stop, this thing is really running. I'm ahead six points. What if I back that stop off to three points and then that way, three points trail, and that way, maybe I could squeeze out a little bit more on the trade. And obviously, it's always a trade-off. Now, today was pretty easy, okay? This is what my screen looked like, and I, I did a capture for you. 
and this is an ETF going straight down. Forget about that. This really isn't a significant gap. It sort of overlapped the prior day. That's more of what's called a lap, L-A-P, as opposed to a gap. I'd much prefer a gap down. This wasn't much of a gap over here, so I'd pass on that. This GLNG, is, it's overlapped and it's sideways. This thing shot pretty much straight up over a day or so, and it's overlapped, so I would ignore that one. The ORAN, it's kind of all over the place. It's, it might be a foreign stock or it's thin or choppy just by looking at it. And then this SPI, really not nothing there, no structure. This one here, wide and loose and sideways, another ETF had it lower, natural gas. So out of all these, you can see I've got a check mark down here on the very. So that's the one that I went with. And I think, let's see, we've got a nice little trend here, a little pullback. And again, I grabbed this capture a little late so you could see that it did work out. So the idea again is in that pullback, you're looking for that kind of exhaustion gap, so to speak, to the downside. And then you look at the play that pop to the upside should and should be a keyword in that sentence it occur so here's what it looks like on a big chart gap lower okay and the idea again is to capture that reversion to the mean move in the direction of trend in this particular case it's a fairly volatile stock it ran at the 36 and then implodes down to 20 so i gave it two points on this particular trade so Gave it a nice liberal entry and then dropped my stop below it about two points, which actually puts you right below the low, which would be an area which you fail. What do I always preach when it comes to stops? Put your stop at a point where your original setup would be a failure. And I think in the unknown market wizards, it made me feel good when I heard him say, when the premise of your trade no longer exists. So then we add two points and that puts us up here. You can see it does trigger in on the second bar. It went up there and it tagged the stop or it came within one cent of the stop, I forget. But it did go on to hit the, when I say stop, I mean limit order. So it did tag the limit order and then we stopped out of the remainder. So 400 bucks, I'm sorry, 400 shares at 21.82 and then 2382 limit that's two points right and then two points at two points so that's 400 bucks and then on the trailing stop we ended up with 162 so that's another 324 so add it all up and it should come to 724 so that's better than the poke in the eye for a little day trade and i was able to to get this off in more than one account which is kind of cool and exciting now here's the thing you don't want to be the little rat going for the cocaine, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I know people that do that. God bless them. But it puts a lot of stress on you. And I had some, I'll talk about it in an upcoming video that I'm going to shoot. But I got a little overactive earlier this year, and it was beginning to affect my life in a lot of ways. I think I've already mentioned that earlier. But with an opening gap reversal, okay, you want to be as hands off as possible. So in a case like this, it's like, okay, I decide I'm going to enter here, I use a two point stop. So I place a stop entry order right here. Okay, go about my life, knowing that if I get triggered in, I've got two and two, okay? So bam, I get triggered, get a little alert. So I immediately get up and put in a stop. I also get alert on my phone. You guys can set it to go to your phone in case I go to breakfast or something. Although yesterday, yesterday I didn't get to breakfast till 11.30. <laughs> it was such a crazy day. But the point is, okay, so two points. So we get triggered in, stop down here, two points below, put a limit order up here, two points above, okay? And a trailing stop at two points, okay? So this isn't a hard stop here. This is a two-point trailing stop. But initially, it will be two points away. So if you... Trigger in again. Let's say it was 22 and change. We'll see where it actually was. Or 21. Where was it? 2182 is where we triggered in. Okay, so round 22. That stop is going to be two points away initially, and then it's going to automatically trail higher, which is kind of a really cool thing. 
Okay, any questions on the opening gap reversals before I shift gears here? What's the advantage of FinViz? Well, the advantage of FinViz is I can go in and see a lot of things all at once, okay? So a while back, I know you guys, you might remember, I went in and I said, okay, show me all the IPOs for the last 90 days. And then again, you could do that. There's a way to do that. That's what I was alluding to earlier in stock charts. There's a way that they actually made something for me. And then they do have candle glance charts over there. I haven't gotten around to working through all that. Got a lot going on. So if I have something that's already working, I don't tend to go out and reinvent the wheel. But maybe when my subscription nears, maybe I could move over to stock charts for that piece. Anyway, long story endless, it does show you a bunch of things. It stands for financial visual, I think. And so I like the fact that you could just look at a screen full of charts. Now, what I, I haven't done it lately, but what I've done in the past is I'll create a filter to show me a tradable universe in FinViz, and I might get like 50 pages of stocks, but I'll scroll through all of them, seeing, at, seeing about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seeing about 15 or 20 at a time, and then just keep hitting page down and make a momentum list from there, or, or not all of the stocks, but anything that I really, really like, or use that as kind of a double check to see whether or not I have the stocks in the in the my in my momentum list, my small momentum list that is, versus my entire tradable universe, which I will have the stocks there, but it helps me to recognize things that I should be in. Okay, any questions on opening reversals? Any more questions on the FinViz? I only scratch a service with the FinViz. I have a gap. Um, which I could publish to the Yahoo group. I have a gap screen. What's cool about it is if you come up with a screen, it's in this big old long URL and you could just cut and paste that. But I have a gap screen. And then, like I said, I did a little tradable universe thing, but that's pretty much it. I really don't do much else. And there's a lot of other things in there, whether they're worth it or not. Oh, the other thing I like to do too, is I like to get a quick glance of Forex charts. I could see the entire Forex universe, or at least the majors, the yen, the euro, um, some others. I don't have my trailing stop going tonight. The rally must be over. <laughs> this morning I'd forgotten I had a, a euro position on, and I heard the little trailing stop was going up. I wish they, I, think, I wish Take or Swim would make noise when that trailing stop would move. That's kind of a, a neat way to listen to what's going on in the market and not actually have to watch it. Okay, this CRSR was a recent stock that we were long and we got in at 21 round numbers and it was trading around 48 a few days ago it's since corrected as you know anyway so i said you know that's 27 dollars in open profits and in this particular account i had 300 shares left started off with 600 shares flipped out half and 300 are left and if you look at the entire investment how much margin is getting eaten up with this trade it's $14,400. And just staring at that big $8,000 number on one stock made me think, well, is there a way to flip out in the options? Well, the options were ridiculously expensive, but I went deep into the money till I'm so deep, it was almost, it almost kind of negated doing this. But what I was attempting to do is substitute some options as and with a delta of, of a good fat 100 as opposed to holding the shares so i've got fourteen thousand dollars in change tied up in this investment so to speak eight thousand of that in change is open profits and then we come in a couple days ago and it rallied up sharply gapped higher and you know i'm looking at this thing somewhere around 48 or so, and I'm doing the math, and the stop coming into the day was at 35, okay? So that's $3,900 ouch if this thing retraces and stops out, and that's a pretty big ouch. So my thinking was, what if I were to buy some options, 
and then sell my stock. Now, what I did was instead of buying the, instead of selling the stock as soon as I bought the option, since the stock was moving, I put in a trailing stop on those 300 shares and I actually squeezed out an extra point on the trade. Now, let's see if we could find the, oh, here we go. So I bought three calls here and I didn't want to lose my position, okay? And that's why I traded into the calls. And on another trade I did recently, if you go in and watch a stock chart show from yesterday, which will be live on my website on Friday, December 4th, okay? I talked about another one where I flipped out into options. So I bought the calls here, and then I rode the stock up a little bit more, another point or change, or point and change, and picked up a little bit more on that. Now, my thinking here in rolling into options is if this thing retraces all the way down to that stop, I'm going to lose that money anyway. But if I can get into the options position, I will be able to keep my position. In a case like this, I was able to squeeze out an extra point on the stock. So here's all the transactions. And I did... Truth be told, I did a couple of day trades in here just because I'd fallen in love <laughs> with this stock. And that's why when I came in yesterday, I'm going like, yeah, I'm going to go after that CRSR. That's, I really had to, to back off a little bit and not get too aggressive. Now, you can see I lost my ass on the calls, okay? So I bought them at 10.8, flipped them out at 3.4 for a residual of 1000 bucks. $3,200 going in, $1,000 going out. So that's a $2,000 loss. But had I rode that stock all the way down to the stop, that loss would have been much greater. So you can see here, I was able to lock in $8,000 of profit, okay, by trading out of it. And actually, again, I've got an extra point out of it from where I bought the options. So the options actually started the day with a little bit of a tailwind, and then I, I got another point out of the stock itself. Down here, this was the original trade. I squeezed out a little bit more than 1% on that. That was original swing trade, I should say. So we buy 600, okay? So 600 was bought at 20.98. 300 was flipped out for a swing trade because we don't know if it's gonna come, become this big old fat trade or not. And then I traded out of it again into these call options, which I ended up giving up $2,000. Now, in this case, it worked out pretty good. The question that I asked on a similar kind of, uh, I don't want to say micromanagement, but very actively involved trade that I did in the PLTR, in the, again, in a stock chart show, the question is, is it worth it? And it's like, well, any Duke in her new book about what's it called, uh, How to Decide, I think. And I've only kind of opened up the front cover or whatever and read a few pages. But she calls outcome biases to make it a little bit more easier. She calls it resulting. So the resulting on this looks pretty good. It looks like I kind of beat the system, so to speak. Even if you take out these little day trades, it's only, what, 333 let's just say $400 a day trade. Okay, that's just kind of S&G trading. Which, by the way, you got to be careful in doing. But anyway, picked up a little bit here and there. So resulting suggests this was a pretty smart move. Longer term, I don't know. Because I think if memory serves, what would happen is if the stock was about where it was when I bought the options at expiration, this, I don't know if you want to call it a hedge, but this rolling into options would have cost me $600, okay? So that's, in one month, that's a $600 drain, and that's substantial. So, so the jury's still out on whether this option stuff is worth it or not, but when I have a really, really big profit in something, I look at where my stop would be, I look at how painful that retrace is going to be, and then I try to find some options I can roll into. In this case, the options were ridiculously expensive, but I figured it was worth a shot. Anyway, a little bit more advanced stuff than I normally do. Okay, uh, any gold members in here who have not joined the Facebook group, I would urge you to do so. I know some of you don't do Facebook, 
join as your dog and I'll approve you. The thing is, trading can be a really lonely sport. And as my wife has said, said uh, multiple times, that the Facebook group is probably the best thing that I ever did. Now, you do have to be a gold member of DaveLander.com. That's $47 a month. And that's, uh, I hate to say it, but it keeps the riffraff out. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> no, all joking aside, what it does is it allows you to go in and take the courses and get up to speed. And a lot of the questions that you might have, I guarantee you, I've covered those either in the Q&A or in then all of the four free courses free to gold members. And then I tell you what, we've been getting, like this morning, I threw out the very trade. I threw out... I forget which ogre I threw out yesterday. Oh, X X P E is it XPEV? I have already forgotten the trade. <laughs> I alerted a friend of mine to a to a stock. He was sitting next to a guy in a plane. The guy's like, "What do they do?" And it's like, "What a stupid question." <laughs> anyway, follow along with trades like ogres. Today is a great example of that. I hope somebody else. Well, I think I know somebody else got in that very trade. So that's fantastic. All right, let me shift gears here, get to the live charts. What I want to do, or what I will do, I should say, is I'm going to take a look at the overall market real quick. If you have some individual stocks, please start asking about them now so we'll have some continuity. And let me get the charts up and running. So I just want to take a quick look at the market, and we might be able to take a look at a couple of stocks in here too. And I couldn't get the service spreadsheet up because I, I got locked out of all my accounts right before it went live. But I wanted to go in and see what the difference was in the CRSR trade. I know I've improved upon the trade, but by how much, I'm not sure. All right, let's take a look at the piece. So Flatsville today, not a whole lot to report. Excuse me one second, let me shake a mouse. See what's going on in the future. Come on, you could do it. Okay, not a whole lot. So, Flatsville, again, in the P's, right at all-time highs. A uh, little bit of an up movement, obviously, puts you at brand new highs. I would like to see it break out and not look back. If we back out the chart a little bit, you can see we're right around this little prior peak in here. But at least we cleared this prior peak way back here. So, so far, so good. I'd feel a heck of a lot better if we see some acceleration higher. NASDAQ into the smidge higher, and at these levels, a smidge is all you need, so close at all-time high, so that's certainly a good thing. The Rusty is just, let's see if it made it. No, not quite. Excuse me, the Rusty is just below all-time highs, kind of rallying out of this flaggish type of pattern. The Rusty's had the greatest breakout of all the indices, and that's kind of encouraging because these more inefficient stocks or the stocks that I like to trade the most. Let's take a look at the energies. Remember a few weeks ago I said, and this is quoting, I never think of his name on the fly, John, John something from Dorsey Wright. Anyway, John, John something from Dorsey Wright. I'll put his name up in the scroll and the uh, edited version. But he gave a really good speech at back before this Corona thing started, obviously, at the annual conference of the San Francisco Technical Analysis Society, and I was also speaking there. And I really enjoyed his his talk about momentum. And one thing he pointed out is that value does become momentum at a certain point in the cycle. And I think that's what we're seeing now in the energies. I've always just traded it. I trade a lot of things that I don't know why it works just because i empirically i see it okay looking at 2000 charts a day and a couple hundred sectors but then it was kind of cool to put a little meaning behind it and sometimes the value areas begin to take off and right now we're seeing that in energies we're also seeing that in the banks the banks were left behind and just went sideways forever but now they're taking off nicely not at all time highs but decent little trend Nonetheless, now banks are kind of a sleepy area, not much excitement there. I did see an IPO there that I'm long, EBC, pretty good looking bank. Yes, you need to just mortgage your house and put all your all your funds into that one stock. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, biotech, kind of electric cardiogram all over the place, but 
on an individual issue basis, we have actually have one set up going into tomorrow that looked pretty darn good, TKO type of setup. But on individual, again, individual issue basis, there is some individual strength and individual setups here look pretty darn good. I'd prefer if the whole sector would get to new highs, but it is kind of electrocardiogram, it's kind of sideways. But a few big up days would put us all the way back to new highs. And look at this big day here, about 5% move. So there's still some excitement and euphoria coming into biotech. It might be related to all this garbage that's going on. Transport's banged out new highs today with a little bit of vigor. So that's certainly a good thing. Semis have been banging out new highs and actually close at new highs today. Losing a little steam in here. Probably could use a little bit of correction. But so far, so good. Gold, the commodity. Let's see if we can get a, see if I can get this. Nope, I knew it would do that. Damn it. Hotkeys uh, screw things up. Gold, the commodity, rallying a little bit in here. But you can see it's kind of rolled over as of late. Let's try another one. Nope, everything just keeps pulling up all kinds of stuff. Okay. Anyway, gold, the commodity, not looking too good. I can't get my bow ties in here. But believe me, they've they rolled over. Gold the stocks were actually up a little, well, actually down today, okay. But they've been up as of late, but it looks like a major top remains in place in the golds, okay. And silver not looking so hot either. Silver the commodity vis-a-vis -vis SLV, a little bit stronger than gold, but certainly nothing to get too excited about. So a little mixed action here and there, but overall, pretty much a bull in the market. Overall, things are looking pretty darn Good. All right. Keith wants to talk about WTI. Good to see you, Keith. WTI. Yeah, I like this one. The only problem that's kind of jumping out of me a little bit. Let's see if we can get a crosshair in here. You do have a lot of overhead supply. So this in and of itself, I would pass. That's the hard part is like when you finally get these energy setting up, at these low levels, these value stocks turn momentum, you run into overhead supply. Now, sometimes it's a good problem to have. The CPE set up, and I told everybody, it's like, hey, you know, here we are set up down here. It looks pretty good. Let's go after it. Yeah, it's got some overhead supply around 11, but hey, we get to 11. That's a good problem to have. Well, here we are at 11. <laughs> but that's okay. And maybe we'll plow through it. It's trying to get through it. But Keep an eye on that overhead supply, especially in those energies, MRO, marathons, could be another one. This one looks a lot better than that other one, okay? And you can see that not a whole lot of overhead supply there, nice thrust from lows, kind of cup and handily looking, okay? So I'll give that one, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I like a little more pullback, but it's still kind of first thrusty coming off these lows. So you really don't get a whole lot of pullback or you can't sit around and wait for a whole lot of pullback. So yeah, I think that one looks pretty good. Good eye on that one, Keith. Sage. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. I just got called to Sage. Oh, you want to look at Sage? Oh, damn it. Um, this sort of looks like it could be in trouble. I don't know what's going on longer term. This is kind of crazy. So I'd never buy a stock that's pushing into this huge gap because markets have really, really long memories. Okay. So there's still a lot of people still holding on this thing from hundred and from 80 and all the way down. But let's forget about that for a second and just take a look at the right side of the chart. By the way, you find a broker, I'll let you trade off the left side of the chart. Let me know. It looks okay. It's kind of double top knockout ish looking, but it did kind of pull back quite a bit, given the fact that it's it kind of made this little bit of a double top in here. But I think if I was just seeing this, I think it looks okay. Any more pullback would have me concerned, but that longer term action, I would pass on it. Now I have been, if you watch tonight's service, and if you're watching the recording of this, I'm gonna update the archives really soon. So you'll get to see tonight's within a few days, maybe, unless the stock we're looking at for tomorrow doesn't tr uh, doesn't trigger. But anyway, you'll see that I have been a little bit more lenient, at least in one particular stock, uh, because of the longer term action wasn't fantastic, but over the short term, it looked pretty good. And I've been more lenient in these biotechs when they because they're kind of getting their act together. It's, it's like it's a different kind of, I don't want to say it's different this time because you get into a lot of trouble saying that, but it seems like it's a little different this time 
where the euphoria over these stocks will outweigh some of the longer term action. Not longer term action like this, where you've got a gap down from 150 to whatever, whatever the heck's going on there. I would research this further to see if this truly is a gap. Let me just make sure we're not unadjusted for splits or something. No, I don't think it is. Where can I watch the recording in the archives to Dave Landry website? Yeah, if you go to my homepage, thanks for asking. So the latest show, at some point tomorrow, once it's edited, it's gonna show up on the homepage, okay? Here's last week's. And what I've encouraged you to do is register for free, okay? And let's see if we can get this logged in, this damn thing. Might have to do it later because I got logged out of everything. All right, well, anyway, if you register for free, once you get to the next page, you'll see the week of charts. I'll have quite a few of them up there, okay? And then, of course, you can always, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, DaveLander.com. I'm sorry, YouTube.com slash C slash Dave And I'll put up a link in this, in the record, okay? But uh, thank you for your interest. I appreciate that. But yeah, you can get you can get that. And then also at DaveLander.com slash archives, you can get the archives for my trading service. So all these stocks I talk about, all the mystery charts, like from the Stock Chart Show and a lot of the ones we use here or, or mentioned, and you can see what my thinking was at the time. And like last night, a client was kind of to point out, that was like, hey guys, these electric cars are getting whacked. Let's watch for an opening gap tomorrow. Hey, Dakota. Dakota was talking about OLMA, OLMA. How's things in California? Oh, there we go. Doesn't have tremendous volume. Maybe on a pullback. I wouldn't try a, um, a buy at B or a breakout strategy with this, but maybe on a little bit more pullback. I would like to see maybe a little bit more run higher first. But yeah, for sure, you want to put that on your on your watch list. Oh, you're welcome. How about ear? Yeah, this looks good. Uh, it's a little bit on the thin side for an IPO. My only concern seems like lately, it used to be an IPO with two or three hundred thousand had plenty of um, had a good spread. It might have a bad spread. I'd like to see it pull back a tiny bit further. But with IPOs, sometimes you don't get the pullback that you that you wait for. You can't you can't wait for, or you don't get the perfection that you're looking for or want. So this one looks okay. Ideally, I'd like to see a little bit more pullback, but not so much to where it's all the way back here. But yeah, keep that on your watch list. Thanks for flagging ALGM. Mark, are oh, you welcome? Yeah, ALGM was one we traded. See, this is a nice little example. I actually traded this one. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. If you go in and watch the week of charts, you can find it on my website. Even if you're a free member, you could find it from last week and week before. But a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this stock and I actually got in on this day here, wrote it up, stopped out of half, better than the Pokemon I trade. And then sometimes it's hard to do, but I went back to the well. And this one actually was an official recommendation on trading service. 27 to 25, I think, if memory serves. And again, I'm locked out of my spreadsheet too, pain in the butt. But when it was approaching that initial profit target, okay, like in here somewhere, what I did was I put in a trailing stop a half a point below, and then I would squeeze that a little bit better than the than the trailing than the initial profit target. And that's a little trick you could do, especially now that we got these automated trailing stops and all these brokerages. You could just click that in and then go about your life. But yeah, we flipped out half of those shares today. So hopefully, had you would hope, but hopefully we'll ride it for a long, long time. You're welcome, Mike. AM short, yeah, you're probably onto something there. That was a that was in the Landry list about a week ago as a short. Yeah, up here somewhere it was a short. But yeah, it's a short again. Yeah, that's just just a big old fat, ugly cup and handle. You you're gonna have a little bit of support below probably here. But yeah, that's a that's a pretty good looking short, George. Good eye on that one. Give you a high five. I'm just not in the mood or not in the mood. I'm not um not inclined to rush out and do a lot of shorting, although it would have paid off. You can see from 75 down. 
But overall, the market still looks okay. I mean, other than index futures here and there, I think I shorted some later in the day. Well, I know I did. That's why I was checking the futures earlier. But other than like um, intraday index futures, I'm not rushing out and shorting a whole lot. But yeah, that looks pretty good as a possible short. You know, my concern with the gold is, seems like the world's kind of crazy now. I guess I'm interjecting logic into the equation, which is always dangerous. But I just don't feel very comfortable being short gold stocks at the moment. Okay, any more? Any other questions, anything else? Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. TLS. Yeah, TLS, I'm long. Um, a couple of days ago, I don't know if I threw it out in the Facebook group. If I didn't, well, I don't apologize because it hasn't worked so far. But yeah, this was a stock where it, it made it extend it. With the buy at B, let me just kind of rewind that. With the buy at B, you want to see a decent size range, okay? And sometimes that range doesn't happen until the day it actually triggers. Now, if you're good, if you have a good memory, you'll know that a buy at B, we tend to not take the setups below twenty dollars. Well, I've kind of loosened those parameters a little bit. Right now, I'm kind of around twenty five dollars or so, based on the IPO market, but. Um, yeah, Dakota, I would uh I would mortgage my house, <laughs> sell your business, and I would put everything into TLS. No, I'm joking, uh, because I'm long, obviously. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I wouldn't rush out and buy it just like right now, but what you might want to do is watch for a new closing high. Okay. And then you might even you might even get a little aggressive and then say, okay, I might just trigger into this one as opposed to waiting to that new closing high. Less aggressive, wait for the closing high. The only problem with that is, what if tomorrow, it well, tomorrow afternoon, it's going to probably go up 10 points, right? So you're going to be buying at 32 instead of, let's say, 23 and a half on a trigger, okay? Are you shifting towards using trailing stops when your profit target is hit these days? It all depends on the stock and the stock's behavior. The ALGM was behaving okay. And I looked at it this way, even though I wasn't quite to the trail to the um initial profit target, I could give up a half a point. So what? Because my big money, hopefully, is gonna be in that second loan. The, like the CRSR on just 300 shares was worth eight thousand dollars. Okay. So that's 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 good money. That's better than poking the eye, right? But every now and then, because I have this little automated trailing stop feature, which I think is really cool. I'll go in and put that trailing stop in. And, and for instance, when I was lagging out, which is always dangerous, of course, but when I was lagging out of my CRSR position, I bought the options first, and then I put a trailing stop, trail that stop higher, squeeze another point out of the position. So yeah, it's something to consider. The only issue that you might end up with is like, this one's still a fairly low volume IPO. Notice how it spiked up, it came back in. So what you the issue you might end up with is you might miss that trail, that initial profit target. So in some cases, especially with these thinner IPOs, what I have been doing is putting a limit order in at that initial profit target. Okay. So the quick answer is it depends. But if it's if it's nicely moving in my favor, then and looks like it's going to hit that stop and be uh, hit the additional profit target and beyond then i will trail a stop intraday okay rvp i got stopped out in the eighth should i get back in rvp why don't i know the stock yeah it looks okay the only thing is it's kind of like bump bumping up against this prior peak in here i would pass on that keith okay you had a profit in August. Well, if you profited overall in a trade, you know, that's one thing I have to remind myself sometimes, like the ALGM on the first loaf, it's or first trade I took. You know, it's like, hey, I got stopped out, but I made money in like two days, right? And then I got stopped out. I have to look at the net net. What I've been doing in more recent times, like I talked about last week, as a sort of spreadsheet 
and I'm just tracking closed profits as opposed to minimally monetizing those open profits so much. Okay, anyone else? Going once, going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for attending. Everybody have a great weekend, and we don't talk between now and then. And then it looks like everybody here tonight is in the gold, gold member or a gold member. So I'll see you guys in Facebook. You're welcome, David, and you're welcome, Dakota and George and everyone else. Thank you so much.